Hello, movie friends. Welcome back to the show. It's been another exciting week of news, new box office returns, a ton of announcements announcements from Netflix. So there's a lot to get into this week. How about we start with the box office? And don't worry, Darling was the big premiere this week. Yeah, they're number one at the box office, getting $20 million this weekend. And according to Post Track, the number one reason why moviegoers went to see this movie was 40% because of Harry Styles, then 30% went because of Florence Pugh, 38% wow. Florence Pugh. So Harry Styles and Florence Pugh just pulled in a huge audience, which is pretty wild. Yeah, I wasn't sure how it would perform, but um, giving, give like he just sold out Madison Square Garden 15 times in a row. It's, it's a lot. That, it's, it was like the biggest, it's the r- biggest record now. So he has a huge amount of star power that I guess I never realized, especially when you make the transition into movies. And on a budget of $35 million, that's a pretty solid opening weekend for yeah. Don't Worry Darling. It'll, then, it'll turn a profit. And then we had The Woman King in second place at $10 million in its second weekend, which is not great news. That movie's up to about $35 million or $40 million right now globally. It really needs to make about $100, $125 million to be a profitable film Big with that budget. budget. Yeah. Avatar got a re-release, $9 million. Whoa! <laughs> Which is what a re-release? The IMAX re-release. Because well, uh, No Way Home only made like $2 million. No, it made $6 million. $6 million, yeah. but still not 9 And then Barbarian, its total box office is now up to $24 million worldwide. And it opened at 2,300 movie theaters. It just added 550 theaters because word of mouth on this film is excellent. Wow. Congrats to the filmmakers and team behind Barbarian for 20th Century Studios. Big hit on a small budget in there. I like how you slowly roll out an independent film like that to get the word of mouth going. And it's just a testament to the success of the film that they opened up to 500 more theaters in its third week. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Now, Netflix, ta dum was, t- was yesterday on Saturday, and they re- released a bunch of new information about upcoming projects. I made a list of the biggest ones. So, Witcher Season 3 is coming summer 2023. Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery got a new clip. Squid Game Season 1, there's an unreleased clip that just got released from Season 1, not from Season 2. Just a fun little deleted scene. Stranger Things 4 released a blooper reel. Enola Holmes 2 got a new trailer. Heart of Stone got a trailer. Queen Charlotte, which is a Bridgerton spinoff, got a trailer, as well as Bridgerton Season 3 behind the scenes. We had a Pinocchio behind the scenes feature with Guillermo del Toro. Cannot wait for that one. There's a new Wednesday trailer for Wednesday Adams. The Witcher Blood Origin prequel series (laughs) is announced and coming, I think, next year, which is going to be starring Michelle Yeoh. They cloned Tyrone, a new Netflix sci-fi comedy starring Jamie Foxx. Money Heist Korea got its first clip. Extraction 2 behind the scenes featurette, You Season 4 teaser, The Redeemed Team, which is a new basketball documentary on one of the um, United States Olympic basketball teams. I think the last one Kobe Bryant was on. And then Enter Galactic got some more behind the scenes and tri- clips and stuff. Yeah, The Redeemed Team was the team that like made it like, oh, we have a great Olympic basketball team. We had kind of fallen apart for a few decades, a couple of decades of just like, just poor performance in the Olympics. So that's about that team that just dominated once again, like they did in the 90s. Now, some more information that happened. We had the Andor three-hour series premiere this past week. Anthony and I have not had a chance to get around to it, but I'm hoping to watch it this week, at least one of the episodes. And also tonight we have Hut D, House of the Dragon. (laughs) It's going to be the first episode featuring Olivia Cook and Emma D'Arcy taking over the roles of Rhaenyra and Alicent. And HBO Warner Brothers have been releasing a lot of press with them too. Uh, a lot of interviews and a lot of journalist interviews with magazines and stuff. So you can see a lot of stuff for them online on talk shows and stuff this past week to gear up for them making their uh, season premieres on the show. Very excited. We will miss the other actors. I know, they, they did, did a great job. A great, great job. But I still think they did an amazing job casting all four actresses because oh, they, sure. they definitely seem like older and younger versions of themselves. I think everyone's going to be blown away by the performances of these older actresses now. Believe it or not, Jurassic World Dominion is still in theaters and it has officially passed $1 billion at the box office. I think Universal might just kept it in theaters just to hit that milestone. So you know, they can Tom have Cruise it. is like, that, it took you that long already? I mean, it's, How, been, it's been a while, guys. Top Gun. That was like eight years ago. Top Gun hit it pretty quick. (laughs) Tom Cruise, like, good job, guys. Thumbs up. There's also a really interesting new trailer for M. Night Shyamalan's new film, Knock at the Cabin Door. And this has no, it's just Knock at the Cabin. Knock at the Cabin. Sorry. And this has adding words over there. (laughs) It has a great cast: Dave Bautista, Jonathan Groff, and Rupert Grint, as well as others. It seems as as though it's uh, this couple with their daughter are staying in an isolated cabin in the woods, and then these four strangers show up and. Some for some reason, 
uh, the apocalypse is upon them and the circumstances of events with this small family, uh, the entire survival of the planet rides on them. Well, we don't know if there's something like we that. We don't know if that's the actual plot. That's yeah. just what these, it's a home invasion, a cabin invasion, and they say that they're there to save the world to prevent the apocalypse. Yeah. But I mean, it could just be a cult that's crazy. That's true. We don't yeah. know if the movie's about the actual apocalypse. I doubt it's a cult. I, I bet it's super crazy. All I know is whenever Dave Bautista puts on glasses, we're g about to get a great performance out of him. He looks great. <laughs> He's the lead. He played Ryan twenty forty nine. He's become such a good actor. <laughs> he really has. Oh, yeah. Sick reference, bro. Sick reference, bro. <laughs> reference, bro. <laughs> Everybody knows it. <laughs> uh, Francis Ford Coppola's Bram Stoker's Dracula returns to cinemas in 4K this Halloween. I highly recommend checking it out if you like surrealist cinema and Francis Ford Coppola doing something completely different than he did with The Godfather and other films he's made. It's, but it's really visually It's really stunning. trippy. It's yeah. really cool. It, he just went for it. Yeah, he, it's his uh, most visually uh, interesting film he's Plus ever done. Plus, we got Keanu, Keanu, who's like 28, and he's so young. Keanu and Winona, and then Gary as Dracula. Gary as Dracula is worth the admission ticket. Yeah. And if more Fantastic Four news. So, Marvel is underway with pre production. So far, they've announced some of the team. Uh, so, Matt Shackman, who directed and produced WandaVision, will be directing Fantastic Four. And uh, Jeff Kaplan and Ian Springler will be writing the script for the movie. Springer. Springer. You all right there? Spring, Springla. Springler, knock, knock at the cabin door. Give me a break. <laughs> Give me a break. And Jeff Kaplan and Ian Springer, they don't have too much of uh, cinematic uh, credits for writing movies, but we'll stay optimistic about this movie. Why don't you stop giving them a hard time? Hopefully they can finally nail a Fantastic Four movie. Everyone's waiting. Now we have a new Cloverfield movie in the works with Babak Anvari tapped to direct it. And J.J. Abrams is returning as producer. I think this is a franchise that still has potential and interest by audiences uh, the Cloverfield Paradox did not perform very well for audiences, and it was just really streaming because I, I don't think they it was a bad movie. Yeah, I don't think they would have saw it being a successful film in theaters, so they just released it streaming. I think there's still untapped potential in the franchise, so we'll see what it's going to be like. Hopefully, it's not an Origins. Where did the monster come from? Origins. <laughs> Next up, Hocus Pocus 2 has been shown to the press, and early reactions call it magical, hilarious, and on par with the original film. Uh, Hocus Pocus 2 will follow two teenagers who light the mysterious black flame candle, inadvertently bringing back the Sanderson sisters. There's a new documentary on Apple TV called Sydney. It's a documentary about the life and career of Sidney Poitier, the great actor. Also, the new there's a new Bardot trailer for Alejandro Iñárritu's new film. Iñárritu. 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 Alejandro Iñárritu. Iñárritu. You're, you're all right. I got it. <laughs> okay, Mr. Spanish. <laughs> Alejandro. <laughs> the film will be released theatrically and on Netflix later this year. But if you want, in the meantime, check out this trailer. Sorsha Ronan has been... Sorsha. <laughs> Thank you. Sorsha. Thank you. Sorsha. 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 <laughs> I did it on purpose. Sorsha. 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 She's been cast in Steve McQueen's <laughs> Who's been cast? Sorsha Ronan has nope. been cast in <laughs> Steve McQueen's World War II film, Blitz. It's backed by Apple TV. It'll tell the story of a group of Londoners during the bombing of the Capitol during World War II. I'm surprised we haven't seen a major feature film about this made in the last... I don't even know if one has ever been made about the bombing of London, so... This sounds really cool. Really interesting. And, really, and we love Steve McQueen. His return to the big screen because he's been doing a TV series the last couple of years. Yeah, he did. A, he had the uh, small X on Amazon Prime. And that took a lot, of his, a lot of his time. So the way to remember to say Saoirse Ronan is it rhymes with inertia. So Saoirse. Saoirse. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Thank gives you. me shit. He can't take it. Saoirse. <laughs> what was I saying? Saoirse? Yeah. Saoirse. Saoirse. Like inertia. Saoirse. Conjunction, notion, what's your oh function? <laughs> uh, Netflix and Stranger Things are releasing a very special holiday-themed sweater for the Christmas season uh, for the Hellraiser Club. So if you want to get that, it's available for pre-order. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun with the Hawkins High-themed Lounge Fly Collection. So um, so the, the Hellfire Club Stranger Things Christmas sweater, sweater is for Merchoid. 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 And then there is a new Stranger Things line of Hawkins High themed clothing. Ah. So yeah, just to on lounge fly. Yeah, and make that a little more clear. Thanks for clearing it up, man. Anytime, pal. Louise Fletcher, the actress from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, passed away at the age of eighty eight. She won an Academy Award for that film and it's a tragic loss in the film community. Mm. James Earl Joe announced his retirement <laughs> from the role. <laughs> 
You said James Earl Jones. Joe. <laughs> James Earl Jones. <laughs> had a lot of wine last night. <laughs> Teeth are still purple, kid. He's uh, he announced his retirement from doing the voice of Darth Vader, and from now on, Disney will most likely be doing it digitally. So they won't even probably cast a new actor. They'll do the same thing that they did with Luke Skywalker. Just a using uh, a digital AI technology to create future performances. Uh, I thought I thought Mark Hamill did audio for Luke Skywalker, and they blended it with uh, CGI with the AI program using his old to make audio. him sound younger. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. Mm-hmm. But this will just be completely AI. It won't have anything. He, like he won't be recording new audio or anything like that. Well, they got plenty. Yeah, no, they yeah, plenty so, of the tank. But I mean, it's been so advanced. I mean, they did it with Val Kilmer and everything. Oh yeah, for, totally. for yeah. Top Gun, uh, Black Can- Black Panther, Wakanda Forever has just released its Empire Magazine covers features. We got a great new look at Namor's headpiece. The production design on this film looks stellar and exquisite. Cannot wait for this movie to come out. Netflix has released a new release date for its upcoming film Wednesday. It will be coming out after Halloween on November 23rd on the streaming app. Extending spooky season. It looks good. It looks very good. Yes, get some PSLs and watch sun with and watch Wednesday. You know what a PSL is? <laughs> PSL? Yeah. No. Pumpkin spice latte. latte. Learn oh, it. Oh, yes, it. bitches. Learn it. Yes, queen. Spooky season. <laughs> yes, witches. <laughs> Hellraiser got its first trailer from Hulu. <laughs> from Hulu. We're both all over the place. I didn't even have one last night. <laughs> from Hulu, a.k.a. Disney. FYI. <laughs> <laughs> it looks pretty decent. It looks pretty solid. It's got like a very Stranger Things horror vibe, and I feel like. It looks pretty gory. Yeah. I want, if I'm, it looks if, dark. If they make it, I want it to be gory and graphic. Yeah. It's probably going to be rated R, but I mean, give me some, give me some gory. You know, Disney has Hulu for this reason to release their mature films, so let's go. Yeah, just just kill a bunch of people. That's, that's what we want. And the makeup and prosthetics looks very good. It looks solid. It looks very good. And then finally, Jeremy Allen White joins the sci-fi film Fingernails. Jesse Buckley and Riz Ahmed are on board to star in this film from director Christos Niku. Fingernails is set in a world where a test has been discovered to measure whether couples are truly in love. Sounds like a Black Mirror episode. Yeah, it sounds like a really cool concept for a movie, and he's just killing it now. He just had the bear, and now it seems like he's finally making his transition from TV, which he's been doing for 15 years about now, with yeah, Shameless, Shameless and this, yeah. to now being in movies, which is really cool. I think he's a talented actor. He's he's uh, acting in the upcoming wrestling film with Zac Efron. Oh, right that's now. cool. Yeah, they're doing yeah. that right now. So that's, that's so cool. I love to see someone whose career, you know, started in TV in a show that got notoriety and then like transitioned to movies and make, successfully. Start making it. It's, yeah. it's really cool. I think he deserves it. I think he's just, one of, he's like the best part of you Shameless. You watched Shameless, right? I watched the first like four seasons. Uh-huh. He's, he's like the best character. I never watched it. He, he's super entertaining and cool. Good. He's like, he's like the coolest He's a cool one. guy. He's a cool guy. Nice. He's wicked smart. Congrats, makes a lot of mistakes congrats, though. Congrats, Jeremy. <laughs> Episodes we have coming this week on Monday tomorrow. We have our episode on Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. So excited for you all to show it, to see it. I edited it and finished it yesterday. It's one of my favorite episodes we've done in a while. Then Thursday we have, what'd you edit? Scarface. 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 <laughs> it's really good. And then we have House of the Dragon episode, this will be six? Episode six? Episode six. Uh, a review Tuesday. on Tuesday, so don't miss that for sure. And don't forget to check out our second podcast, Hogwarts Legacy Podcast. We post new episodes every Wednesday and Friday. It's good. For that. Yeah. So we have content coming for you constantly with that. The TikTok has been popping. Yeah, it's blowing up it's, right it's now. It's more popular than our our TikTok. Yeah, it's getting it's, more it views. It's way more views and yeah. followers than yeah, ours. Because it's not shadow banned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've been shadow banned 76 <laughs> we're times. Still, we're still moderately shadow banned on TikTok. They let us have a good video once in a while. Yeah, but like, I will give them the one. The Hogwarts Legacy TikTok bam, bam, is banger, been banger, destroying. Banger, 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 banger. I told you, man. And also, like, if you if you guys haven't checked it out, it's, I think the episodes have been coming out really well. Uh, you're doing a great job editing them, wow. but they're Thanks, a lot Kyle. of fun. And it's it's very it's a change of pace for what we usually do. The cool do. thing about it is we're making sure that it's a lot of Harry Potter lore is integrated into it. Absolutely. So it's not just talk- yeah. I mean I mean most of it's just speculation based stuff. A game that hasn't come out in five that's not coming out for five months, but we still we we've used a lot of Harry Potter nerdery and lore in there to have a lot of fun. Just oh, talk yeah. about different concepts. We could from just the do movies. Harry Potter episodes. Too. I think that yeah. eventually it's going to just turn into a Harry, Harry Potter, Potter lore. Pod. It's still a cool pod. name for the podcast. Exactly. So yeah. I think once the game's over and done with next year, it's just going to be a Harry Potter podcast. You know, I was watching some more behind the scenes stuff of the game and I was like, this, I think I'm going to commit some time to this. <laughs> it looks really cool. <laughs> we'll see. It'll but... just take over like every other movie night that I have. Yeah. Instead of watching a two hour movie, I'll do two hours of the game. Yeah. Just play a little bit here and there, like yeah. five hours a week. It's not yeah. that big of a yeah. commitment. Uh, so, but we're really excited about it. We hope you all have time to check it out. It's on every single platform on YouTube, Hogwarts Legacy Podcast, Instagram, TikTok. Poppin'.
Go find go another find. one. Another one. Another one. The TikTok Raiders of the Lost Podcast Empire is just getting started. All praise to the Most High. <laughs> the Most High. <laughs> that's what that's what DJ Khaled says. <laughs> DJ Khaled. Da, 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 da. Raiders, Raiders podcast <laughs> empire. You guys glad doesn't our podcast doesn't sound like that? <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. Skip, skip. All right, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, have a great weekend, weekend. Bye, y'all. Thank you for watching Raiders of the Lost podcast. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button as well. Notifications for sure. Listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere you can listen to podcasts, and be sure to check out this other content we have on our YouTube channel.